Hello everyone, uh, welcome to KNX tutorial number 13. In this tutorial, I'm gonna uh, discuss motion detector. I've received an email from one of uh, the followers uh, regarding Gera PIR, which is Gera Presence Detector Mini Compact, and he's asking about why he's not able to see the motion detection object. Now, initially when I looked into it, I was kind of thinking why I'm not able to see it as well. But then I read the manual a bit and try to understand what's actually happening over there. So let's uh, look at the this PIR, presence detector. There is a few things which I want to discuss. If you if you read there in this page, uh, they're saying about the PIR sensitivity and all these things, interlog and all these things. So you guys need to, uh, which is page number fifty nine. So you guys need to read this page, which is really important uh, about the motion detection and what's actually the first page. I'm going to explain it a bit more. And then this is function description of the ceiling detector. Uh, and if you look at the movement uh, at the bottom, it's saying there in here, movement. So what it does is ceiling detector, it measure the brightness. And then after that, it look for if the brightness if you, you are set a certain level like uh, 500 per, uh, 500 lux and if the if in that particular room uh, the light level is below 500 lux then if there is a movement the sensor will turn the lights on so it's actually a movement detector but there is a really small difference between presence and movement detector what I understood from reading through the manual, the presence detector is slightly more sensitive, which detect any movement, while like even small movement, uh, you shake hair, you you wave your hand or anything, so the presence detector will detect it, while uh, the movement detector will detect uh, actually movements, so not like. Uh, you wave a hand or something so actually you move around then it will detect you so let's go to the ETS uh, and I will explain it a bit further um, so what we need to do okay so I've already brought this uh, presence detector edit into a project and we just go through quickly through the parameters in the parameters, this first page is actually, if you read in here, what they are saying here is about the, so the brightness level, where of our motion, not this one, and the previous slide. So what they say is, is when the luminaire activated by the device are in the detection field, the switching on and off of the luminaire can be result in motion detection due to change in thermal radiation. So what they are saying is, when uh, when they, especially in up state, when the light is on and there is no detection for a bit, and then the light goes off. So what does happen is previously there was a bit of heat emitting from that light and now when the light turned off that heat disappear and the movement detection what they the PIR the PIR actually detect the heat so there is a difference between slight heat so which may result in triggering the PIR again will turn on the PIR again because the PIR think that there is a movement and that's why they 
over there if we go to look at the ETS now. So that's why this motion and light sensor is there. In normal scenario, you don't need to change anything. Like this should work perfect in normal scenario. But this page is slightly confusing for some people. People think that why there is no object for motion detection. Actually, the function block one and like if you activate more, they all are movement detector. Some detect very small movement, while other detect uh, like a proper movement. Now on the top page, you see uh, sensitivity of PIR1, PIR2, and PIR3 is just the sensitivity. And then what it does is when the PIR send off status, it will interlock, it will stop the PIR from working for, for three seconds, which means that the, the, the change in the heat will not be detected by that PIR in that time. Uh, so that's why there is no object. If you look, there is no, there is an interlock PIR sensor, but there is no any object for the motion detection. Now, if we look in here, this is function block one. If I go there, if I change it to the ceiling detection, or uh, present detection, all of the same detector. So let's say I change it to the ceiling detector. It's single device, fully automatic. And what I need is now I have selected here is use the elevation uh, delay. That's not there. So if we go to the brightness, so what it does is use brightness dependent option 500 lux. So at the moment, it is kind of working as a ceiling detector. Now, if I disable this, it's become movement detector. And if it's enabled, it's ceiling detector. I'll show you a page. And if you go down here, next page, so what the ceiling detector does is, let's check the brightness. First thing, whether they will see whether in the room is there enough light. If there is enough light, the movement will be disabled. It will don't do any movement. It's like movement, if it detects movement, it will not send any commands because there is enough light. And if there isn't enough light, then it will be sending commands. But when when we when I said disable brightness, so this function and the light function will disappear and it will be only movement. So every time if there is a movement, it will like in this case now it's now it's become uh, a movement detector. Only movement will be working because there is that it it don't call, it don't look at the light level what the light level is. If there is any movement it will turn on the lights uh, and when the movements end, it will turn on the light. So, yes, um, to be honest, presence detection, movement detection, I asked like uh, quite a few people during different trainings, uh, the people who actually work for the manufacturer. Uh, I asked, uh, one of the young technical support person. Uh, I asked him what's actually the difference and he don't know either. Uh, there is actually, to be honest, there isn't much difference. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, what, what I do mainly is if there is, what I do is when I get a device, I will connect that device in office or somewhere, test them again and again and again, and make sure that what I want to achieve is actually achievable, like whether it's working or not. Uh, so don't get confused with the movement detection or presence detection. They are all 
there is a different, like slight difference, but that not that there isn't much difference. So, yeah, I think so. That's all. Um, what I will mainly in in the offices, unless you want to regulate light level, like uh, you want to work as as a regulator, which you want to maintain a certain level, like uh, five hundred lux, thousand lux, which is this. Pair, I don't think it's capable of. Uh, it is present indicator for light control. I don't know what which one is actually this one. Uh, um, see me no, so it's not. So that this one is not doing. Uh, it's not a regulator like uh, which send values kind of uh, to the light level and maintain a certain uh, certain level of the light. So what it does is some of the PIR they are capable of sending uh, value rather than and then they increase and decrease those values like if you want to maintain thousand lux in, a, in an office environment what it does is they will turn on the light at 50% or whatever percentage it is and then they will measure the lux level and if it's above 1000 lux then they will decrease that level uh, to 30%, 40%, something like that. And if it's below, then they will increase that. So in that scenario, you got to use this uh, brightness dependence, which is you can't achieve it without uh, brightness, brightness evaluation because you can't achieve that without, uh, without that. But... If it's a moment or presence, you got to use this. Uh, you got to disable this brightness evaluation. Uh, quite a few drops. Uh, customer complain that their PIR don't work, which which actually does work because we have somehow in some jobs we live. We like some people they want. Some people they don't want the lights to be on when. There is enough light, but then after some time they will forget and they will say, "Yeah, uh, my this PIR is not working. Sometimes work, sometimes don't work." So the simple thing is to disable this object, and then PIR will always work. Uh, I haven't actually. I just looked at, at this detector uh, manual and read it and try to make sense of it. Uh, but uh, please do try this uh, if you have a PIR in hand in office before you go, uh, before you go and install it on the site. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to give your feedback. Uh, Goodbye and we'll see you probably soon again.